Houthi rebels organized protests on Monday in different parts of Yemen marking first year of the Hamas attacks in southern Israel which triggered a war in Gaza. Hamas-led militants abducted 250 people during their October attack in Israel in which some 1,200 people, mostly civilians, were killed. Israel's retaliatory offensive has killed over 41,000 Palestinians, according to Gaza health officials, who do not say how many were militants. The war in besieged Gaza has also displaced roughly 90% of the Strip's population of 2.3 million. Most have been displaced multiple times over the course of the war. Only thanks to the North Korea, the Kremlin can still wage its war in Ukraine. At that, many shells were produced a long time ago, but they are still in the service of the North Korea. American military experts write that only thanks to Pyongyang, the Russian Federation can still fight against the Ukrainian armed forces. At that, the North Korea has a lot of shells, even though most of them are unreliable. The resource, foreign policy, informs. As of the summer of 2024, the North Korea supplied the Russian Federation with about 2 million shells. Most of them were defective. The expert on weapons of the North Korea, Van Diepen, said that even despite the large amount of defects among artillery shells, the Russian Federation can still fight against the army of Ukraine. The main tactic of the Russian Federation is to release as many artillery shells as possible before the offensive. Michael Kaufman of the Carnegie Endowment agrees that the North Korea's artillery shells are unreliable, but their quantity also affects the war in Ukraine. Experts say that North Korea shells allow the Russian Federation to have a 3 to 1 advantage on the battlefield. It is Russia's large number of shells, although they are of poor quality, that alarms both Kyiv and the West. About half of the approximately 3 million artillery shells that Russia uses each year in its war against Ukraine come from North Korea, according to the Times. A source of the agency who cited Western intelligence data, Russia has become dependent on supplies from North Korea after Vladimir Putin visited Pyongyang earlier this year. Western intelligence assesses that many of the North Korean shells may be faulty, but their sheer number allowed Russia to achieve consistent successes on the battlefield. The Times source noted that despite this, Russia is suffering significant losses in Ukraine, about 1,200 military personnel per day, 480 of them in the battle for the city of Pokrovsk in the Donetsk region. According to Western intelligence, Russia is currently unable to simultaneously capture Pokrovsk and push Ukrainian forces out of the Kursk region without mass mobilization. However, the Russian authorities are not taking that step at this time. The source of the agency added that there are currently no signs that Putin is backing away from his main goal of subjugating Ukraine's sovereignty. He also added that he sees no prospects for negotiations in the future. A drone battle in the air no longer surprises, but Ukrainian UAV operators demonstrate a high level of skill in combating enemy drones. According to Defense Express media outlet, drone operators of the reconnaissance platoon of the 130th Territorial Defense Battalion released a video showcasing a truly unique case where an enemy reconnaissance drone, a Mavic type, was shot down using a dropped munition from a UAV. In the spectacular footage, it is clearly seen how the Russian drone was completely destroyed by an incredibly precise strike, while the Ukrainian drone continued its mission or returned 
to the operator. It is worth noting that shooting down a drone using a drop requires a high level of drone operator skill as well as luck, especially in timing, the moment when the enemy UAV is hovering in the air. Another important factor is that the enemy drone must remain stationary at the time of impact as hitting a moving target with dropped munitions is likely an impossible task. Drone operators report that this is the first confirmed case of shooting down an enemy drone using dropped munitions. In general, both Ukrainian military and the enemy are testing different methods to destroy enemy eyes in the air. Previously, videos occasionally surfaced showing one drone taking down another using the simple method of jamming. The Russians decided to test their first anti-aircraft FPV drones in this manner. The enemy collided with the Ukrainian Furia UAS, but they failed to shoot it down. The UAV successfully stabilized and returned, sustaining only minor damage. At the same time, it is worth mentioning that Ukrainian military continuously approves FPV drones and recently the Wild Hornets workshop managed to accelerate a drone to 325 km an hour, which not only enhances its effectiveness against UAVs, but also provides more opportunities to target enemy helicopters, Defense Express says. Recently, Ukraine has eliminated Russian soldiers on jet skis along the Dnipro River in a drone strike. Drones are one of the defining features of the more than two and a half years of fighting amid the Russia-Ukraine war. Hundreds of airborne drones zip across the skies above the front lines each day, ticking off tasks ranging from reconnaissance to targeting as well as kamikaze strikes designed to take out enemy armored vehicles, personnel and positions. Among the most famous are cheap, first-person view drones, well known by now for zooming over the battlefield and capturing footage routinely shared online by both Russian and Ukrainian sources. Often, the video feed will cut off sharply as the drone careens towards its target and explodes. According to a post on X from United24 Media, a video shows Ukraine's operational command south, eliminating Russian fighters riding a jet ski on the Dnipro River using FPV drones. Ukrainian FPV drone operators have eliminated Russian soldiers on jet skis on the Dnipro River. United24 Media wrote on X alongside a video showing the drone strike. 